All right, so I need to figure out why the sky is blue. I remember hearing something about light and the atmosphere, but I'm not entirely sure how it all works. Let me start by breaking it down. First, I know that sunlight is made up of different colors. I think these colors are like a rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So when sunlight comes into our atmosphere, it must interact with the air and particles in some way. Wait, I remember something about Rayleigh scattering. I think that's the process where light scatters in the atmosphere. But how does that work exactly? I think it has to do with the size of the molecules in the air and the wavelength of the light. So, shorter wavelengths might scatter more than longer ones. Let me think about the wavelengths. Blue and violet have shorter wavelengths compared to red or orange. So if Rayleigh scattering is more effective for shorter wavelengths, that would mean blue and violet light are scattered more in the atmosphere. But then why isn't the sky violet? Hmm, maybe because our eyes are more sensitive to blue light. Or perhaps the sun emits more blue light than violet. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's a combination of both factors. So when sunlight enters the atmosphere, the blue and violet light scatters in all directions because of the small molecules like nitrogen and oxygen. During the day, when the sun is overhead, the light comes through a thinner part of the atmosphere, so blue scatters more, making the sky appear blue. At sunrise or sunset, the light has to pass through more of the atmosphere because the sun is at a lower angle. This longer path scatters the shorter blue wavelengths out, leaving the longer red and orange wavelengths to dominate, which is why sunsets are often red or orange. I should also consider if there are other factors, like pollution or particles in the air. On hazy days, the sky might look more hazy or even white because larger particles scatter all wavelengths more evenly, but that's a different scattering called me scattering. Putting it all together, the sky appears blue because the shorter blue wavelengths scatter more in the atmosphere due to Rayleigh scattering, and our eyes are more sensitive to blue light. During sunrise and sunset, the path through the atmosphere is longer, scattering the blue light out and allowing reds and oranges to dominate. I think that covers the main points. Maybe I should double check if it's just the Earth's atmosphere that makes the sky blue, or if other planets have different colored skies due to their atmospheres. For example, I think Mars has a more reddish sky because of its different atmosphere. That would support the idea that the composition of the atmosphere affects the sky color. So in conclusion, the sky is blue because of Rayleigh scattering, scattering more blue light combined with the sensitivity of human eyes and the sun's emission spectrum favoring blue light. Okay, so I'm trying to explore some unexpected... I know the basic explanation involves Rayleigh scattering, where shorter blue wavelengths scatter more in the atmosphere. But I want to go beyond that and find some fascinating tangents or connections to other fields or ideas. Hmm. Maybe I can think about how the color blue in the sky affects human emotions or behavior. I've heard that blue is often associated with calmness and tranquility. So does the blue sky make people feel more relaxed? That could tie into psychology. Also, in art, blue is a popular color, maybe because it's so prevalent in nature. Artists like those in the Romantic movement often depicted skies to evoke certain moods. Wait, what about other planets? I remember that Mars has a reddish sky, but what about Venus? I think it has a thick atmosphere that scatters light differently, making the sky more yellowish. So the color of the sky isn't just about the atmosphere's composition, but also its density and the type of light from the planet's star. That could lead to thinking about exoplanets and how their skies might look based on their atmospheres and stars. Another angle could be the philosophical implications. The sky's color is something we often take for granted, but it's a result of complex interactions between light matter, and our eyes. It makes me think about how much of our reality is constructed by our perceptions and biology. If humans had different eyes, the sky might look different to us. That's a bit mind-blowing. In literature, the sky is often used symbolically. For example, a clear blue sky might represent hope or a bright future, while a stormy, dark sky could symbolize turmoil. So the color of the sky isn't just a scientific fact, but also a cultural and literary motif that carries meaning beyond its physical properties. Thinking about history, how did ancient cultures explain the color of the sky? Maybe they had myths involving gods painting the sky or other supernatural explanations. 
It would be interesting to compare those myths with the scientific understanding we have now. It shows how human curiosity about the sky has driven both storytelling and scientific inquiry. In terms of technology, understanding why the sky is blue has applications in fields like remote sensing and astronomy. Knowing how different atmospheres scatter light can help us study other planets or even understand Earth's climate better. It's a connection between basic science and practical applications. Oh, and what about the future? If we were to terraform another planet, understanding how to create a blue sky could be part of making it habitable for humans, both physically and psychologically. The color of the sky might influence how settlers feel about their new environment. I also wonder about the role of the sky in music. Are there songs or compositions inspired by the color of the sky? Maybe classical pieces that evoke the feeling of a clear blue sky or jazz songs that reflect a moody, overcast one. Music and visual arts often intersect in how they evoke emotions, so the sky's color could be a bridge between them. There's also the aspect of light pollution. In many cities, the sky isn't as blue because of artificial lights scattering more at night. This affects not just astronomy, but also the natural light cycles of ecosystems. So the color of the sky at night is another layer to consider, connecting to environmental issues. I should also think about the physics of color perception. How does the human eye's sensitivity to blue light contribute to the sky's appearance? It's not just about the scattering, but also about how our eyes are tuned. This ties into biology and the evolution of our visual system, maybe explaining why other animals might perceive the sky differently. Lastly, considering paradoxes, the sky isn't actually blue at night. During the day, it's blue because of the sun, but at night, it's black or dark, except for the stars and moon. So the sky's color is dynamic and dependent on time and illumination, which is a bit counterintuitive if you think about it as a constant blue. Okay, so I'm trying to explore some facets. The user mentioned that the sky isn't actually blue. So I guess the first thing I should think about is how the color of the sky changes depending on the time of day and the lighting conditions. I remember that during the day, the sky appears blue because of Rayleigh scattering. Sunlight, which is white, is made up of different colors, each with different wavelengths. Blue and violet have short, that's why the sky look, but at night, the sky is dark, except for stars and the moon. So the color isn't constant, it's dynamic, and depends on external factors like the position of the sun. Now thinking about how this relates to other fields or phenomena, maybe the dynamic nature of the sky's color can be compared to something in art or culture. I know that in art, blue is often associated with calmness or tranquility, while darkness can represent mystery or the unknown. So the changing sky could symbolize different moods or themes in literature or art. For example, in literature, a blue sky might symbolize a peaceful time, while a dark night sky might symbolize conflict or uncertainty. Another thought is about how different cultures perceive the sky. Some cultures might have myths about why the sky changes color, which could tie into their spiritual beliefs. For example, maybe a culture believes that the blue sky is a sign of good fortune, while a dark sky signals something else. This could connect to human psychology, where the color of the sky influences people's emotions or behaviors. For instance, a sunny day with a blue sky might make people feel happier, while a dark, cloudy sky might make them feel more subdued. Also, considering biology, as the user mentioned, animals might perceive the sky differently. Bees, for example, have ultraviolet vision, so they might see the sky in ways that are invisible to humans. This makes me think about how our perception of reality is limited by our biology, which is a philosophical point. It's like, reality isn't objective, it's filtered through our senses. So the sky being blue is a human experience, but other creatures might have entirely different perceptions. Thinking about paradoxes, the sky isn't actually blue at night, but during the day, it's blue because of the sun. Yet, when the sun is below the horizon, the sky transitions to darker hues. This dynamic change is a paradox because we often think of the sky as a constant blue, but it's not. It's constantly changing based on our position relative to the sun and the Earth's rotation. This could tie into the concept of time and how our perception of the world is tied to our planet's cycles. In terms of historical perspectives, ancient civilizations must have had different explanations for the sky's color. Maybe they thought the sky was a solid dome painted by the gods. Understanding the science behind it 
like Rayleigh scattering, is a relatively modern concept. So the shift from mythical explanations to scientific ones shows how human understanding evolves over time. Looking into the future, maybe on other planets, the sky would appear different colors based on their atmospheres. For example, a planet with a different atmospheric composition might scatter light differently, making the sky appear more violet or green. This ties into space exploration and the possibility of life on other planets. If humans were to live on such a planet, their perception of the sky would be entirely different, which could influence their culture, art, and psychology in ways we can't yet imagine. Also, thinking about technology, maybe future advancements could allow us to change the color of the sky artificially. Perhaps through some form of atmospheric manipulation or advanced lighting, we could create different sky colors for aesthetic or even psychological effects. This raises ethical questions about altering nature and how such changes might impact human behavior and society. In music, the sky's color could inspire different genres or moods. A blue sky might be associated with upbeat, cheerful music, while a dark sky might inspire more somber or reflective compositions. This connection between visual and auditory experiences shows how different senses can influence each other in art and culture. Lastly, considering metaphysical implications, the sky's color could be seen as a metaphor for the human condition. The blue sky represents clarity and hope, while the dark sky represents the unknown or challenges. This duality mirrors the ups and downs we experience in life, teaching us about resilience and the cyclical nature of time. So putting it all together, the color of the sky isn't just a scientific phenomenon. It's a multifaceted topic that connects to art, culture, psychology, biology, history, and even future possibilities. It shows how one question can lead to a wide array of interesting and unexpected connections across various fields. Right now, listen to me, I've been trying to tell you, and you know what, I like toting the fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast, with AI, I'd heard about it, it's easy, so, um, I came across 1000X Cursor course. And that's great, you know, it just made everything super silky smooth. It just, it just worked, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, 1000X, you're coding. 